Hi everyone. In this series of tutorials, I'll be looking at how to use MuseScore 4 in education. Today we're checking out a few settings in MuseScore that will improve your workflow when you're setting tests. Because who wants to be setting tests for three hours? The first thing I can strongly recommend is to add a palette and then create a custom palette. Let's call it Tests. And create. And this is an empty palette that we can fill up with whatever we want, really. So I'm often swapping between treble clef and bass clef, but I don't really use any of the others, so I can keep my clefs section closed. It's also useful to have a crotchet tempo marking. And the other main one that I use is this insert horizontal frame. Now I know that I've got my main things there, and then I can go and look for the occasional key signatures, or even just leave the key signatures open, and perhaps the time signatures, and I've got a lot less running around through the palette looking for other things, especially if I've got a few things open. I don't want to be running up and down like that. Because we're using tables in this Microsoft Word document, the content of whatever the question is has to fit within this section and not go across the whole page. Now in MuseScore, it's, its default setting is to have a full page. So we could probably make our, our lives a bit easier by reducing the width of our page. Let's do that. We make sure that nothing is selected and then go to properties and we can go to page settings. Currently we're on A4 which has this width and height and I'll just reduce the width until it looks about right to me. This is eyeballing. I'm sure there are proper numbers that I could be using but I'm happy to eyeball it for now. Then I know that I could probably screenshot that and paste it in there and it's looking fairly good already and I'm not having to worry about too much formatting at making things quicker. For larger questions like form where we need to show an entire piece it's not a good idea to try and screenshot everything because you have to zoom so far out that you're really reducing the quality a lot. It's a simple matter then to simply use file export and I'll export as a PNG image. Then I can increase my quality if I want to. So I'm going to increase mine to 600 dots per inch or DPI. And I'll include this transparent background, which means I know that there's not going to be any mismatch of color. Then I'll say export. I'll add my PNG images in this folder. Now I can simply drag them in. Remember that there are two PNGs, one for each page. So I'll drag in the first one onto my table. If we do want a bit of extra space, we can just select all of these columns and merge them. I could probably center that as well. Let's add the second page, which will of course go onto a new page in Word. Brilliant. Now, even when I zoom in on this in Microsoft Word, we have crisp, clear quality. One more thing you might find useful is to right click and stave and part properties again. And this time I'm going to use the cutaway because that will allow me to only see the sections of music that have music in them, that have notes in them. And that could be quite useful. However, I prefer to have absolute control over it. So I'll just remove that cutaway again. 